lieber Vater, we thank you for this new day of life. Wir danken dir für diesen neuen Tag des Lebens. Thank you for the fellowship that we can enjoy together. Wir danken dir für die Gemeinschaft, die wir hier zusammen genießen dürfen. And we thank you for the privilege of inviting you into our presence. Und wir danken für das Vorrecht, dass du uns in deine Gegenwart einlädst. We ask and pray now for the Holy Spirit, Lord. Wir bitten und beten jetzt für den Heiligen Geist her. The light would enter into our hearts. Das Licht in unser Herzen äh, eintreten möge. And that we would receive that love in our hearts for you and for our brethren. Und dass wir diese Liebe für dich und für unsere Geschwister erhalten. Please change us, Lord. Bitte verändere uns, Herr. And develop in us the mind and the heart of Christ. Und entwickle in uns den Verstand und das Herz Jesu Christi. Teach us the wonderful things from your word. Lehre uns die wunderbaren Dinge aus deinem Wort. And we ask and pray for this in Jesus' name. Und wir bitten und beten dafür in Jesu Namen. Amen. 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 Okay, let's uh, open our Bibles in 1 Kings chapter 16. Gehen wir jetzt in unseren Bibeln zu 1. Könige Kapitel 16. I want to just discuss, uh, it's not a dilemma, but it's something that we need to understand. Das ist jetzt kein Dilemma, sondern das ist, das ist jetzt einfach etwas, was wir verstehen müssen. Verse 29. 1. Könige 16, Vers 29. Scott, if you read the first three verses and then Maris, you read the first verses. We'll read it now to verse 34. And in the thirty and eighth year of Asa, king of Judah, began Ahab, the son of Omri, to reign over Israel. And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel in Samaria twenty and two years. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. And it came to pass, as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Zidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. And he, <coughs> and he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. In his days did he, the Bethelite, build Jericho. He laid the foundation thereof in Abiram his firstborn, and set up the gates thereof in his youngest son, Sega, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Joshua the son of Nun. Okay, so... Who is Ahab? Also, wer ist Ahab? King of the kingdom. Yes, he's king of, of Israel, right? So, he's König of Israel, König der zehn Stämme. But what else is it marking in here? And what markiert das jetzt hier noch in diesen Versen über ihn? And it should spring a little things off in our head. Israel and Samaria. And Burma and all. What's your point? Israel and Samaria. Mm. Is that two different places? No. Okay, so uh, what, what's your point? I'm just making a point that the Bible makes the point of calling it Israel and in Samaria. Okay, so uh, okay, also, so uh, it's written, but I'm asking what's your point? Well, in the last few days, okay. Ahab hat über Israel bzw. hier Samaria geherrscht und Israel und Samaria ist ein, ein und dasselbe und in den letzten paar Tagen haben wir uns ja dieses Thema angeschaut. Well, in the last few days, there has been a discrepancy between Israel being the ten tribes and Samaria uh, being represented as the heathen nations, but also the ten tribes. Did we did we mark Samaria as the heathen nations the last few days? Um, so we discussed it. Um, oh, did we did it? I thought we made a differentiation between Samaria and the heathen. Also who is Americans and the Gentiles? Yeah. Yes. Ein Unterschied gemacht zwischen den Samaritern und den Heiden. Okay, so the point is that the command here given to the twelve disciples, it says, go to the lost sheep, right? They're not to go to the Gentiles, and they're not to go to the Samaritans. Samaritans, Samaritans. Right? Also der Gebot 
Das Gebot, was hier den Zwölfen gegeben wird, ist nicht zu den Heiden zu gehen und nicht zu den Samaritern, aber zu den verlorenen Schafen des Hauses Israel. So the point that I want to look at this morning is to talk about Samaria, right? Also ein Punkt, den ich heute Morgen anschauen möchte, ist dieser Punkt über Samaria. So it says here, what, what did Ahab do to the Lord right here? Also, was sagt es hier? Was hat Ahab hier dem Herrn angetan? Er What did Ahab do to the Lord? Was hat Ahab hier dem Herrn angetan? Ja, he provoked him, but what specifically? Also er hat ihn provoziert, aber was ganz genau? It says more than all things. Yeah, he says Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more. More to provoke the Lord of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Right? Das 33 gelesen. So, what did he do to provoke the Lord more than all the kings of Israel? Also, was hat Ab getan, um, um damit den Herrn noch mehr zu provozieren als alle anderen Könige zuvor? Right. Right. Okay. Also er hat hier diese Altar Altäre für Baal gemacht. Okay, but go to verse 30. Gehen wir zu Vers 30. So then he had the son of Omri did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. Right? Okay, he, he married Jezebel, right? Ja, Isabel geheiratet. So it was through the marrying of Jezebel that caused them to make this altar. Right? Also es ist durch die Heirat von Isabel, dass er dann letztendlich auch diesen Altar gemacht hat. Okay, so what's an, an altar a symbol of? Und wofür steht ein Altar symbolisch? Or what's his purpose? Oder was ist der Sinn und Zweck eines Altars? Yeah, to, to, to make a, a sacrifice, right? Ein Opf Opfer dazu bringen. So it's a form of worship, right? Es ist eine Form der Anbetung. So, the point is, You, you have uh, Ahab and he's married to Jezebel, right? Also wir haben hier Ahab und er ist verheiratet mit Isabel. So, the Bible has to interpret itself, right? Die Bibel, die muss sich ja selbst auslegen, stimmt's? So, Ahab is the king of I think you'll have real problems no, no, trying to find Judah in those verses, yes. right? Okay. He's the king of Israel, mm -hmm. right? Ab is the king of Israel. And it specifically says that it's Samaria, right? Man mm -hmm. sagt uns ganz besonders Samaria. Right? But Israel at this point in time was was ten nations, right? Aber Israel zu dieser Zeitpunkt waren diese zehn Nationen oder zehn Stämme. So we know that Ahab is the king over ten nations. Right? Wir wissen, dass der Ahab, also König, über diese zehn Nationen oder Stämme war. Now, the Bible must interpret itself, right? Und die Bibel, die muss sich ja selbst auslegen, stimmt's? So, who did he marry? Also, wen hat Ahab geheiratet? Je Jezebel, right? Wer hat Isabel geheiratet? And we know that a, 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 a woman represents a religious organization, it's a, it's a church, right? Wir wissen, dass eine Frau eine religiöse Organisation oder eine Gemeinde darstellt. That has a specific doctrine, right? Die jeweils eine besondere oder bestimmte Lehre hat. And we know that this this woman represents a false doctrine because what does it lead him to do? Und wir wissen, dass diese Frau hier eine falsche Lehre darstellt, denn was führt diese Frau ihn zu tun? Yeah, to to rear up an altar and worship Baal, right? Ein Altar aufzurichten und dann den Baal anzubeten. Now, so. Uh, Baal worship, what is it? What's another name for it? Und Baals Anbetung, was ist das? Was ist einfach ein anderer Name dafür? Sun worship, right? Das ist Sonnenanbetung. Sister White uses the thing and none other than Baal, uh, the sun god of the Phoenicians, right? Also, Ellen White hat dieses Zitat, wo sie sagt, ja, das ist kein anderer als Baal, der Sonnengott der Phönizier. Now, just keep your place there. Go to Revelation 17. Haltet euren Finger hier und gehen wir ins Offenbarung 17. Und David, du willst 
Nummer 17, dann lesen wir die Verse 1 bis 2. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven lamps, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great one that sitteth upon the earth. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of the fornication. Okay, so what have the kings of the earth done here? So what have the kings of the earth done here? Right, so there's a there's a there's a whore that they've committed fornication with, right? So it's these whore with whom the king has committed fornication. And what what is her what's her wine that they've been drinking? And what is her wine that she's been drinking? What does Sister White say that it is? What does Sister White say that it is? Sunday worship, right? So Sonntags anbeten. Okay, that's their goal, right? To get everybody to worship on the day that they put in place, right? So that's letztendlich ihr Ziel, jeden zu dem Punkt zu bringen, dass sie diesen Tag anbeten. So it says that the kings of the earth, and there's ten of them, right? Es sagt uns hier die Könige der Erde, und es gibt hier insgesamt zehn von ihnen. Because when we go to verse three, denn wenn wir zu Vers drei kommen, Philip, you read that please. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet cloak with twelve names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Okay, so we know that this this beast that she's sitting on, the scarlet beast, is the dragon, which is the represents these ten kings, right? Wir wissen, dass dieses scharlachrote Tier der Drache ist und das stellt zehn Könige dar, auf dem die Frau sitzt. Okay, so um, the kings here. Have been drinking of her wine, which is her false doctrine, and it's sun worship, right? Also, the kings here, they drink now from their wine, and that is their false lehre, and that is this sun anbetung. Okay, so go um, back to uh, First Kings. Go back to First Kings. Go back to First Kings. Go back to Go back to Revelation. Go, go, go to Revelation chapter two. Entschuldigung, gehen wir doch noch mal zur Offenbarung. Heißt, ich bin ja hier bitte ein Könige. Und zwar zur Offenbarung Kapitel zwei. Go to verse eighteen. Offenbarung zwei, dann Vers achtzehn hier. And if you don't read to twenty three, please. 18 bis 23. And unto the angel, and unto the angel of the church of Thyatira write these things, saith the Son of God, um, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last be to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and uh, to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation. Except they repent of their deeds, and I will kill her children with them. And all the churches shall know that I am He, which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Okay, so who's Jezebel according to this text? Where's Jezebel gemäß diesem Text hier? Probably. Right, she's a prophetess that's been seducing uh, God's people, right? Sie ist eine Prophetin, also eine falsche Prophetin letztendlich, die Gottes Volk hier verführt. And we understand that Thyatira is a representation of 538 to 1798. Wir verstehen ja, dass Thyatira, diese Darstellung von der Gemeinde Gottes ist zwischen 538 und 1798. So this is this whore that the kings of the air committed fornication with. Right? Das ist hier diese Hure, mit denen die Könige der Erde diese Unzucht getrieben haben. Okay, so 
the only two places in the Bible that you find Jezebel, right? So the only two places in the Bible where we find Jezebel written, right? The Bible must interpret itself. And the Bible, it must itself explain, right? And this. Okay. So we can see that, that Jezebel is a symbol of the papacy, right? You can see that Jezebel is a symbol for the papacy. And Ahab, who is the king of Israel, the ten tribes, which is Samaria. Right? Und Ahab ist der König von Israel von den zehn Stämmen. Er ist dann auch der König von Samaria. So, when you go back to First Kings, wenn wir zurückkommen zu 1. Könige 16, right? The correct, um, the, the correct interpretation <lacht> of this marriage would be what? Die recht, rechte Auslegung dieser Hochzeit wäre was? Wo würde das dargestellt werden? Was stellt es da? Ja, das ist das right? Das Sonntagsgesetz. Und und what what other information there can you uh, take to to prove this point? Und welche andere Informationen können wir diesen Versen entnehmen, um diesen Be äh, Punkt noch genauer zu beweisen? Said, what other information can you take there to prove this point? Welche andere Informationen ist in diesen Texten hier noch, um diesen Punkt zu beweisen? No, 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 no. We've already mentioned it, right? That he did more to provoke the God of Heaven than, than any other kings, right? Also wir haben hier gesehen, er hat hat er mehr gemacht als alle anderen Könige, um den Herrn zu provozieren. Right. Okay. So. Let me just rub this out, right? Mm. Ich das hier weg tun. Den Moment. Okay, when we come to the Sunday law here, what does the Father want to do? Wenn wir hier zum Sonntagsgesetz kommen, was möchte der Vater hier tun? Watch. Er möchte hier die Plagen ausgießen, aber warum? What's his greatest wrath? Was ist sein größter Zorn? No, no, no. What's his greatest wrath? The seven last plagues, right? So, der größte Zorn des Herrn ist die sieben letzten Plagen. So, if you've done more to provoke God than, than any other king, what's he going to do? Also, wenn du den Herrn mehr provoziert hast als irgendein anderer König, was möchte der Herr wirklich tun? Remember, this is talking about the end of the world, right? Denk dran, das spricht ja alles hier über das Ende der Welt. Yeah, it's speaking about his greatest wrath. I mean, the, the, this this king represents the one that's brought the most wrath upon him, right? Also, er bringt dann folglich auf den größten Zorn über diesen König mehr als über alle anderen <lacht> zuvor. So that that would that would correlate with the fact that right here the father wants to pour out. The seven last plagues, right? Das wäre ja dann auch in Übereinstimmung, dass genau hier dann der Vater die sieben letzten Plagen eigentlich schon ausgießen möchte. But what does Christ do? Aber was macht Christus dort? Hold, 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 right? Er sagt, halte, 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 halte. Okay, so when you take all these bits of information together, you can see that Ahab and Jezebel represents the the USA who's the king of the ten kings and the papacy right so wenn wir all diese Sachen zusammenbringen können wir dann natürlich sehen dass Ahab die USA darstellt er ist der König der zehn Könige und Isabel ist das Papst right and that made this this marriage has provoked God of heaven and he wants to pour out his wrath upon them but Christ says hold right wir haben also diese Hochzeit durchgeführt und ähm, das provozierte den Herrn als alles, mehr als alles andere und der Herr möchte hier diesen Zorn ausgießen, aber der Herr sagt, oder Christus sagt, halt. Okay, so, just go to chapter 17 in verse 1. Gehen wir jetzt zu Kapitel 17, Vers 1. And it says... 
And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. Right? That's the first one. So, what does the, the Lord do right here in response to that? Was tut der Herr hier in Sonntagsgesetz in Antwort auf dieses Sonntagsgesetz? He hides his hygiene. <coughs> he shuts the heaven. He, 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 yes, he, he, he shuts the heaven, right? Er verschließt die Himmel. And just, I'm uh, 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 trying to remember where it is, but if you go to Matthäus 16. Look for. Is it look for? I think it appears. Okay, look for, sorry. Lesen wir Lukas 4, Vers 25. Lukas 4, Vers 25. So there's, there's a famine gets brought upon them and the heavens are shut up for, for three and a half years, right? Also es wird diese Hungersnot über sie gebracht und die Himmel sind für dreieinhalb Jahre verschlossen. Okay, now go to uh, Revelation 11. Gehen wir jetzt zu Offenbarung Kapitel 11. Verse 3 and then uh, verse 6. Lesen wir erstmal jetzt Vers 3 und dann Vers 6. And I will give I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. In fact, read 5 and 6, please. Und lesen wir doch noch 5 und 6 jetzt. And if any man who hath heard them, that proceedeth out of their mouth, and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. They have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all the plagues of the silver. Now, the two witnesses here, right, are parallel to the first war in Revelation 9, right? Also, die zwei Zeugen sind ja eine Parallele jetzt zur ersten Wehe in Offenbarung Kapitel 9. Right? Stimmt's? Guys, are we with us or are we off in our own minds? Right? Yes. Okay, so the, the, the point that I want to make is that this three and a half years that Elijah shuts up the heavens is the 1260. Right? And if we, go, if we were to go to Matthew 24, the Sunday law crisis is, which is the Four winds is marking them to our safety, right? Und uh, wenn wir auch zu Matthäus 24 gehen, was hier Sonntagsgesetzkrise ist, was auch diese vier Winde sind, da markiert uns Matthäus 24 diese 1260 ebenso. Now, this is all stuff that we are familiar with. Und das ist alles der Stoff, mit dem wir bereits wohl vertraut sind. So we understand that this 1260 that Elijah shuts up the heavens for here is this 
PDT, right? Und wir verstehen also, dass diese 1260, wo Elia den Himmel verschließt, diese Zeit ist hier. Same period we just read in Revelation 11. Selbe Zeitspanne, über die wir auch in Offenbarung 11 gerade gelesen haben. Okay, and the, the point that I want to make is that Ahab is a symbol of Samaria. Und den Punkt, den ich, oder den wir gerade gemacht haben, ist ja Ahab ist ein Symbol für Samaria. And it's always, it's always bugged me this because, um, well, that, that's another thought. But the point is, the, the, the last few days we've been looking at Samaria, right? Und die letzten paar Tage haben wir uns ja Samaria angeschaut. Joel is standing here. Und Joel steht hier zur neunten Stunde. And he's talking about the destruction that's just come upon Samaria. Right? Und er spricht dann hier über die Zerstörung, die gerade über Samaria ergangen ist. Okay, so but, but everything's by context, right? Und wir müssen aber alles immer im Kontext betrachten. Okay, so just remind, go back to Isaiah chapter 10. Gehen wir jetzt zu Jesaja Kapitel 10. Jesaja, Jesaja 10. It says, as my hand hath found the kingdoms of the idols, and whose graven images did excel them of Jerusalem and of Samaria, shall I not, as I have done unto Samaria and her idols, so do to Jerusalem and her idols? This verse 8. So why did, why did Samaria get punished? Warum wird, wurde Samaria bestraft? According to this verse. Because of her idols. Wegen right? ihrer Götzen. Okay, so, but in this context here, who is Samaria? Aber in diesem Kontext hier, wer ist Samaria? Come on, I, I don't know why I'm stumbling over this. I'm not trying to trick anybody. We've gone through this. Who is Samaria here? Also, wer ist Samaria hier? That's another, another thought. I'm just asking plainly, who, who does it represent? Ahola und... Aber ich möchte einfach nur... Genau... Yes, it's God's... It's Fragen, wer, wer ist hier Samaria? Ist I don't know why we're even thinking deeply about this. It's it, Gottes Volk. Verse 5, it says, O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger and the staff in my hand is his indignation. I will send him against a hypocritical nation. Right? Vers 5 und 6 jetzt nochmal gelesen. Who is the nation of hypocrites? Wer ist die Nation der Heuchler? God's people, right? Gottes Volk. Okay. So, he sends, first of all, against the ten tribes, and then against the two tribes, historically speaking. Also, er schickt die Assyrer erstmal gegen die zehn Stämme, und dann gegen die zwei Stämme, im historischen Sinn. And it was because of their idols, right? Und es war wegen ihrer Götzen. And the point that I want us to see is that the Assyrian represents Babylon, right? Der Punkt, den ich euch sehen lassen möchte, ist, dass Assyrer, der Assyrer ja Babylon darstellt. Which is this statue, right? Und das ist auch dieses Standbild. Which is this right here. Und das right? ist auch das hier, genau hier. Because this is the threefold union, right? Und das ist auch die dreifache Vereinigung. Yes? Ja. Okay. So, what, what is it, what do we know? What's the thought that we can bring together from this? Und was ist jetzt der Gedanke, den wir daraus entnehmen können? Or, or what might be the what might be the seeming contradiction? Oder was könnte jetzt die scheinbare dieser scheinbare Widerspruch daraus sein? And when you bring this information together, what might be the seeming contradiction? Also wenn man diese ganze Information jetzt zusammenbringt, was mag dieser scheinbare Widerspruch sein? Okay. 
I think maybe just not forward. Joel is speaking to whom? Speaking to here to Judah about whom? Also Joel spricht er hier zu Judah und spricht mit Samaria. The movement. Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece and Rome are the ones that come against Samaria, right? Babylon, Medo-Persia, Griechenland und Rom sind diejenigen, die hier gegen Samaria kommen. Right? And they are the threefold union. Sie sind die dreifache Union. The threefold union is here. Und die dreifache Union oder Vereinigung ist ja hier. So what might be the seeming contradiction? Was mag jetzt dieser scheinbare Widerspruch sein? That the king of Samaria, who is heir, right, who he said is the three, well, part of the threefold union, comes against God's people, even though he's actually king of God. No, 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 you're, you're, you've gone off on a tangent. Samaria attacks Samaria, right? That's the simple point that I'm trying to get, right? The scheinbare Widerspruch is that Samaria, here, the dreifach union, attacked Samaria. Right? Richtig. It's a seeming contradiction. Das ist ein scheinbarer Widerspruch. Yeah. Okay. So, so what, what can we understand from this point? Was können wir aus diesem Punkt entnehmen? Civil war externally. Something going on internally. Okay, that might be. But uh, the, the, the point that I'm saying is that the symbol of Samaria has to be understood by context to whom it's referring to. Also, right? ich damit machen möchte, ist, dass das Symbol von Samaria basierend auf dem Zusammenhang gedeutet werden muss und dann können wir wissen, auf wen es sich bezieht. Right? Richtig? Because we 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 are being standing here the other day and at, the, at this point in time it, there's a little time of peace here, but at the sixth hour Christ is speaking to whom? Und denn wir haben uns ja letztens angeschaut, hier zu diesem Zeitpunkt gibt es ja noch diese kleine Zeit des Friedens und dann zur sechsten Stunde spricht Jesus hier zu wem? The Samaritan woman, zu der right? samaritischen Frau. Okay, so we've been trying to work this out and you have the, the, the 70, when you read about the 70, who are they sent to? Und dann hatten wir noch die 70 und wenn wir darüber lesen, zu wem wurden die 70 gesandt? The Samaritans and the Gentiles, right? Zu den Samaritern und zu den Heiligen. The twelve are sent to the lost sheep. Don't go to the Gentiles or the Samaritans. Die zwölf sind ja zu den verlorenen Schafen gesandt und ihnen wird gesagt, geht nicht zu den Heiden und auch nicht zu den Samaritern. So if you don't understand this point, then you're going to misapply prophecy. Right? Deswegen, wenn du diesen Punkt nicht verstehst, dann wirst du die Prophetie falsch anwenden. Right? Richtig. Okay, so in this sense. Who would be well, the, 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 they are uh, differentiating between the Gentiles and Samaria, right? Also in diesem Sinne jetzt mit den Zwölf und da wird ein Unterschied gemacht zwischen den Heiden und den Samaritern, right? So the, the so in this sense Samaria would represent God's people, right? Also in, in diesem Zusammenhang würde Samaria für Gottes Volk stehen. Or, or those claiming to be God's people. Oder zumindest diejenigen, die vorgeben, Gottes Volk zu sein. So, you're not to go to the Samaritans in this sense, right? Also hier sollen wir nicht zu diesen Samaritern gehen. And it's in, in relation to this understanding, don't go to their meetings, don't go to those that are preaching Error, right? Das ist im Zusammenhang mit dem Verständnis, geht nicht zu ihren Versammlungen, geht nicht dorthin, wo dieser Irrtum verkündigt wird. Because according to Isaiah 10, what did Samaria do right here? Denn basierend auf Jesaja 10, was hat Samaria hier gemacht? She has idols, right? Sie hat diese ganzen Götzen. Okay, so there's a principle that the external illustrates the internal. Und es gibt right? ja dieses Prinzip, dass das Externe das Interne darstellt. So, This is the external, right? Also das ist jetzt eine Darstellung des Externen. And it's illustrating the internal, right? Aber das illustriert dann das Interne hier. Right? Richtig? Because when, when they make a Sunday law, it immediately affects God's people, right? Denn wenn Sie hier ein Sondersgesetz machen, dann hat das ja sofort einen Einfluss 
auf Gottes Volk. The church is not going to exist from that point forward, right? Die offizielle Gemeinde wird ab diesem Zeitpunkt nicht länger existieren können. Okay, so I just, I just want to see that 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 point. Um, so, so da wird es hier diesen Punkt sehen können. Now go go to First Kings 22. Jetzt gehen wir zu 1. Könige Kapitel 22. Because I know that we've been studying this chapter re recently. Und ich weiß, dass wir dieses Kapitel hier aus 1. Könige 22 äh, immer wieder vor kurzem studiert haben. And I wanted to to use this chapter, but I refrained because there was some thing that was just bugging me that, that I couldn't fathom out. Und ich wollte immer wieder dieses Kapitel benutzen, aber da gab es ein paar Punkte, die mich gestört haben und ich konnte sie nicht wirklich für mich klären. Now, uh, just just before we read this, right? Just go to uh, Second Kings chapter one. Und bevor wir das lesen, gehen wir zu Zweite Könige Kapitel 1. Zweite Könige Kapitel 1. In Vers, uh, let's begin in Vers 1. Und lasst uns in Vers 1 anfangen. It says, then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. And Ahaziah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria, and was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. So, who's Ahaziah? Wer ist hier Ahaz, Ahazia? He's the king of Samaria, right? Er ist der König von Samaria. So he's just a replacement of, of Ahab, right? Er ist einfach nur jetzt die Ersetzung für Ahab. The, the king of Samaria, and, and he gets sick, and, and what does he do? Er wird krank, und was macht er dann? Right. Er, er befragt jetzt hier diesen Beelzebub. <lacht> Okay, so so what would be parallel this and why? Und was wäre die Parallele davon und warum? So. No, stick stick with the the, the theme that we're looking at. Also es wurde der König Saul genannt, aber wir wollen bei dem Thema hier bleiben. Where the kings inquire of the magician? Was wir hier an die so Tafel gelegt haben. Wo sind die Könige, die die Magier befragen? Right, because the Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, is done through these magicians, astrologers, and sorcerers, right? Also, es ist hier ein Sorcerer gesetzt in Beelzebub. Das ist letztendlich dieser Gott von Ekron, und er wird befragt durch die Magier und Zeichendeuter. So, I would take it and put it here, right? So he's he's sick and he goes to inquire, and it's just paralleling uh, Pharaoh and, and Nebuchadnezzar inquiring of these magicians. Right? Also ich würde das jetzt hier hinsetzen, ein Sonntagsgesetz, wo letztendlich er todkrank ist und er möchte jetzt hier diese Magier und Zeichendeuter und so weiter befragen, was aus ihm wird, wie Pharao und Nebuchadnezzar. Okay, in Vers 3. Dann Vers 3. For the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say unto them, Is it not because there is not a god in Israel, that ye go to inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shall surely die, and Elijah departed. What does this remind us of? This Vers 4. And what does this remind us of? I think of two places in the Bible that this parallels perfectly. I find here two Bible stellen ein, die perfect parallel dazu sind. One we've just read. One we've just read. Verse 17. Ja, yeah, 1. Kings 17. What does he do in 1. Kings 17? 1. Könige, Kapitel 17, Vers 1. Was haben wir da gerade gelesen? Vers 1. 1. Könige 17, Vers 1. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto him, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be due nor rain these three years, but according to my word. He walked before the king, Told him, and he turned around and walked away. Right? Also, er ging hier vor den König, hat ihm die Botschaft gegeben und ist dann sofort wieder weggegangen. Right? And he's Richtig? now he, he now hid himself. Right? Und dann hat er sich verborgen. Right? He becomes hidden. 
Er wurde zu diesem verborgenen. Ja. Er wurde ja verborgen. Right? It's a symbol of Bible prophecy, right? Ein Symbol der biblischen Prophetie. And right here, it says, uh, and Elijah comes before these messengers, he tells them, and then he turns around and walks away. Genau hier kommt jetzt uh, Elia vor diesen Botschaftern und er sagt ihnen die Botschaft und geht sofort wieder weg. What about the disobedient prophet? Was, oder in Bezug auf den ungehorsamen Propheten, was ist mit ihm? What does he do? Was hat er getan? It does the same, walks in, curses the altar, turns around and walks away. Er macht dasselbe, er geht dort vor den Altar, vor den König, verflucht den Altar und geht dann sofort wieder weg. And they're, they're all marking this point right here, right? Sie markieren alle hier diesen Punkt. Right, you see the correlation? Können wir den Zusammenhang sehen? And you'll see it in a moment, right? Verse, uh, verse 5. Verse 5. This is back in 2 Kings 1. 2. Könige, Kapitel 1, sind wir wieder, Vers 5. And when the messengers turned back unto him, he said unto him, Why are ye now turned back? And they said unto him, There came a man up to meet us, and said unto us, Go turn again unto the king that sent you, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that thou sendest to inquire? Of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron. Therefore thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. And he said unto them, What manner of man was he which came up to meet you and told you these words? And they answered him, He was a hairy man with a with a girdle of leather about his loins. And he said, It is Elijah the Tishbite. Then the king sent unto him a captain of fifty with his fifty. And he went up to him, and behold, he sat on top of a hill, and he spake unto him, Thou man of God, the king has said, Come down. And Elijah answered and said to the captain of fifty, If I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. Right? How many times does this happen? Also, oh, two times. But, but well, no, how many times does fifty men, does also the captain of fifty? Come jetzt hier diese 50 Männer mit ihrem Hauptmann vor Elia. Okay, three times, so right? Einmal. And just keep your place there. Go, go back to Revelation 11. Weißt du, dann fingen wir hier und gehen wir dann zu Offenbarung Kapitel 11. Vers 5. Warum 11? Speaking about the two witnesses, which one of them is Elijah, right? Warum 11, Vers 5? Das spricht über die zwei Zeugen und einer von ihnen ist Elia. And if any man will have them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. If any man will have them, he must be in this manner killed. Right? So, what are these 50 men coming to do? Also, diese 50 Männer, warum kommen sie? Was, mit was für einer Absicht? To, to, to take Elijah, right? Um Elia festzunehmen. And what Elijah speaks and what happens? Elia spricht und was passiert? Fire comes down from heaven and devours his Enemies, right? Feuer kommt vom Himmel und verzehrt seine Feinde. So it happens three times, right? Und das passiert ja dreimal. 50, 50, and then the third time, they humble themselves before Elijah, right? So 50, 50, and beim dritten Mal demütigen sie sich jetzt vor dem Elia. Okay, so it's specifically marking 50 men, 50 men, 50 men, right? Markiert auf jeden Fall immer 50 Männer, 50 Männer, 50 Männer. Right, in the book of Luke chapter 1. Und in Lukas Kapitel 1. We've been through this many times, right? Uh, Zacharias is in the temple and an angel comes to him. Das ist ja Zacharias im Tempel und der Engel kommt zu ihm. What does he tell him? Und was sagt er ihm? What does he tell him? Was sagt er ihm? You're dumb. Sir? You're dumb or you... No, he tell, tells him that he's going to have a child, right? Er sagt ihm, du wirst ein äh, Kind bekommen. Right, and from that moment forward, his wife Elizabeth, right, how so long does she hide herself? Und von dem Moment vorwärts, seine Frau Elisabeth, wie lange ist sie verborgen? Six months. No, five months. Fünf right? Monate. Five, uh, how many days are in a prophetic month? Und wie viele Tage sind in einem prophetischen yes. Monat? 150 days, right? 150 Tage. So you got 
two times Mark as 150 where they are hidden, right? Also wir haben hier zwei Darstellungen von diesen 150, wo sie also verborgen sind. So all of the correlated back to this, right, is that this this king right here, who's the king of Samaria, is is Mark the one that makes the 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 Sunday law crisis right here. Right? Den, den Punkt, den wir daraus entnehmen können, ist, dass dieser König hier um, der König Samarias ist und er ist derjenige, der hier dieses Sonntagsgesetz macht. Right. Also so, hier. go, now just turn back to 1 Kings 22. Und jetzt gehen wir zurück zu 1. Könige 22. Because we took this prophecy, right, and we're discussing it in this class, and we were really not to be referencing God's people. Denn wir haben dieses, äh, dieses Kapitel genommen und haben das in der Klasse diskutiert und es auf Gottes Volk angewandt. Okay, but let's read. Aber lass uns lesen. Vers 1. Vers 1. And they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth and Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria. And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Wilt thou go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art my people, as thy people, my horses, as thy horses. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the work of the Lord today. Right, so what players do we have right here? Vers 5. Welche Spieler haben wir jetzt hier? What we just read. Was wir gerade hier gelesen haben. Judah and Israel. Yeah, like. I mean, he says. Judah and Israel. Okay, so uh, leave Surrey out of it. Who's who's the two that are coming together here? Wer sind die zwei, die hier zusammenkommen? Israel and Judah, right? Also Israel and Judah. So based upon what we've just done, what does it represent? Basierend auf das, was wir eben gerade hier gesprochen haben, was stellt das dar? Why is there such silence? Why, why is that so difficult? No, I'm asking, who does Judah and Israel represent? Wen stellt Judah und Israel dar? Really? How is it possible that we can do our chapters, that all the chapters before leading up to this chapter, and the chapter after this, that Israel represents the ten kings, and now we're saying it represents God's people? Can't be. God is not the author of confusion. Right? That's the point that I'm making. What, what do you think then Judah represents? Ah, okay, that's neither here nor there. I'm not going to put my own thoughts on it. I'm saying that the Bible interprets itself, right? Also Mark möchte den Punkt machen, dass es hier nicht Gottes Volk ist, sondern dass es in dem Punkt hier die Nation sind. Und ja, also die Frage, die ich halt gestellt habe, ist, wer wäre dann Judah, der sich hier mit Samaria zusammentut? Okay, this is what we have to be careful of, that we do not put our own construction upon God's word. Also es ist wichtig, dass wir darauf achten, dass wir nicht unsere eigene Konstruktion ja, in Gottes Wort anlegen. So, uh, Judah, somebody then that goes together with them. Oh, just, just, just one second, right? So, one second. If you're not turning, that's your question, right? So, Jehoshaphat's the king of Judah. Who's the king of Israel here? So, Jehoshaphat is the king of Judah, and who's the king of Israel? Ahab, right? So, it's Ahab. So, we're going to see in one chapter or a couple of chapters before Ahab's the representing the ten kings that's married to the papacy. Right, and all of a sudden here we turn it back to God's people. That's confusion, right? It's also confusing to say that he now fights against Syria. Oh, okay, I, I get the point, but I'm I'm using let the Bible interpret itself, right? So let's let's let the Bible interpret itself and not put our own thoughts on it. Okay, Fear? No, I have a thought that um, we have north and south. Syria in the north and the ten tribes will be in the south they go forward with the fight between these two and Judah joins them 
that that's what you just thought that okay, okay. Some keep your thought keep your thought <laughs> right there because I, I agree I, I'm not anticipating your thought go back to uh, first Kings and verse one and uh, sorry second Kings chapter one and verse one. Also der Gedanke ist, dass hier Syria vielleicht der König des Nordens darstellt und Samaria der König des Südens und Judah kommt jetzt hier hinzu und das mag vielleicht stimmen. Gehen wir zurück zu 2. Könige Kapitel 1. Und in Vers 1 it says, then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. So what, what's taking place here? Und was findet hier statt? Separation. No, 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 just a war. What sort of war? No, not a, no, no, not what I'm asking. Who is it? I'm asking what sort of war. And what kind of war is there? Civil war. Uh, okay, it's a civil war, right? It's an internal. Internal war. Internal. Because it's it's, a, it's nations that were joined together, and there's a rebellion. So it's, it's a civil war that, that's rising up right there, right? And it was nations that here together were joined, and then steigt die eine Nation auf. Okay, so is that in relate in, in agreement with our understanding right here? Is that in übereinstimmung with our understanding? Yes, 1848, right? Yeah, 1848. It's a, it's a civil war. The war between the north and the south, right? And Bürgerkrieg, the Krieg between north and south. So now it comes back to Führer's thought, right? Let's go back to the Gedanken, that Führer erwähnt hatte. And I would tend to agree with him, right? And I tend to agree with him. Damit übereinzustimmen. The Judah is the one that represents supposedly God's people, right? Das Judah hier scheinbar Gottes Volk darstellt. And he he joins himself together with these that are fighting against Syria. Right? Und sie verbinden sich dann hier mit denjenigen, die gegen Syrien kämpfen wollen. Okay, now if we were to go to Jeremiah 37. Und wenn wir zu Jeremia 37 würden. Who does Jeremiah tell them that you can you can don't go fight against the north, right? And you can put your trust in these all day long that the north will come back and burn this city, right? Das sagt er Jeremiah, kämpft nicht gegen den Norden und du kannst dein ganzes Vertrauen in den Süden, in den in Ägypten stecken, aber die Norden, die Nordarmee wird wiederkommen und die Stadt zerstören. Okay. And who did he tell not to put your trust in? He said it already. You, you said it? I didn't mention that. Egypt. To, to, okay, Egypt, right? Also Egypten. And who's Egypt? Also worin so. sollte er nicht das Vertrauen setzen in Egypten? The ten kings, Und right? Und wer ist Ägypten? Sind die zehn Könige. So, that's what I, I, I'm su su suggesting that is going on here. Right. Das ist was ich hier vorschlagen würde. Findet hier statt. There's a war between the north and the south, right? Es gibt einen Krieg zwischen Nord und Süd. And God's people align themselves, or they 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 they, they know that the the paper says the enemy, and they align themselves with the south. They put their trust in Egypt. Also Gottes Volk verbindet sich dann aber hier mit Ägypten und sie setzen ihr Vertrauen da. So my question would be. Because it's Ahab, right? Yes. He was married to Jezebel. Yes. yes. So he represents the north and not the south. Yeah, but it doesn't, doesn't matter. But to look at things, right? So I, I, I'm not, not in this game. But the point is that he's the king of the ten kings. So ultimately, that's what represents the ten kings, right? But he's married to Jezebel. Yeah, I, I'm not denying that. But we've also got the ten kings rising against the north, right, at the same time. Yes. He's the king here. Look, going to war. You, your argument, you're making arguments here. No, but I, you, I you just, just want to use your argument. You say, all right, just the chapters before, you have Ahab. And now here you have the same Ahab. So why can you just turn him suddenly to God's people? Okay. So I would say, I would then use the same wait, argument. Wait, 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 no, wait a minute. Where's Jezebel? Where's Jezebel here? She's, she's died. It doesn't matter. Well, of course it matters. She's not, no, she's not dead. Ah, okay. Sorry, he, he's predicted that death. Okay, but the, the 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 point is, it's more inconsistent to say that it's it's more inconsistent to to be uh, Ahab, the ten kings, and then turn them back to God's people than what I'm trying to work out here. And you're just making arguments to try. And, well, I don't I don't know specifically. 
I'm, I'm not saying you're trying to do anything, but you're, you're making us arguments because they don't line up to your ideas. But, okay, I ain't got a problem with that. I don't understand it either. But one thing I know is that Ahab there does not represent God's people. That's for a certain. Let's go ahead and read on. I, I, don't, I, I don't know. That's why I'm going through it. But I'm, well, I'm saying for certain, right? It's like this, come back to this point, Daniel 11.40. You can't mix literal and spiritual, right? And the point that I'm making here is absolutely for certain, God is not the author of confusion, right? Same argument, I think, is when I say... No, no, I... I how, I'm, how suddenly I'm, he... I'm not, saw, I'm not um, arguing against your... Ar the, I'm not arguing against your argument. Your argument might be valid. That's neither here nor there. But I'm saying that Ahab here does not represent God's people. That is a certain, right? So, what is actually taking place here, that's what we can find out. And if, if, this, if this idea that Syria is the north and the king of Israel is the south is incorrect, then so be it. And we will look at it and try and understand it. But the point I'm making is it's not God's people. And that's for certain <laughs> to try to twist God's word to make it so. So, um, where were we? Did you have any more thoughts on that? Okay, let's just read through it, right? In verse 5. Lass uns weiterlesen ab Vers 5. It says, And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbid? Now, where, where do we get the, find these 400 men? Prophets. Wo finden wir diese 400 Propheten? Am Kamel. Am, am Kamel, right? Am Berg Kamel. And we know that Ahab has these 400 Prophets and it would represent the, uh, the apostate Protestantism, right? Also Ahab hat diese 400 Propheten und das würde ja letztendlich den abgefallenen Protestantismus beschreiben. Okay, so... And said unto them, shall I go against Ram of Gilead to battle or shall I forbear? And they said, go up. For the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, That there is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him, for he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Hasten hither, Micaiah the son of Imla. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat the king of Judah sat each on his throne, having put on their robes in a void place in the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. Uh, and here's this point. And Zedekiah the son of Chen Chenana made him horns of iron, and said, Thus saith the Lord, With these shalt thou push the Syrians, until thou have consumed them. What did he make him? Und das Vers 11, was hat er hier gemacht? To do what? Er hat zwei Hörner gemacht, aus Eisen, um was zu machen? To, to push. Um zu stoßen. Right, so, I, I, I make this argument again. Go, go to Daniel chapter 11. Gehen wir zu Daniel Kapitel 11. Vers 40. Vers 40. It says, and at the time of the end shall the king of the south do what? So the time of the end shall the king of the south do what? Push. Push at him, right? He will push against him. So, I don't know that I understand this, but I'm just letting the Bible interpret itself, right? Also, I understand some things, maybe not, but I want the Bible to be able to interpret itself. Okay, so... Which, which nation is represented by two horns? Welche Nation wird durch zwei Hörner repräsentiert? The United States. The USA. Right? Okay. So, now, the, the point that I think would help us understand it is the fact that it's a civil war right here. 
und Punkt, den äh, ich denke, der uns vielleicht hilft, das zu verstehen, ist, dass das hier ein Bürgerkrieg ist. So, it, it, a civil war is something that we're fighting is in amongst itself, right? Ein Bürgerkrieg ist ja etwas, wo Kämpfe untereinander stattfinden. Okay, so I, I think that's the key to helping us understand that point. Und ich glaube, das ist ein Schlüssel, der uns helfen wird, diesen Punkt hier zu verstehen. Okay, so, uh, anyway, I'm not going to go on into this now, it doesn't really, uh, I, I will have to spend some more time looking at all the bits and pieces, but I just wanted to make this, uh, I want to make this argument this morning because first and foremost that we understand that there's a, the, the symbol of Samaria, Depending on context of which book you're reading, it might represent something different than another book that you're reading, right? Also, wir werden jetzt erstmal hier dieses Kapitel ruhen lassen, das werde ich noch genau anschauen. Aber jetzt, den Punkt, den ich heute, heute Morgen euch sehen lassen wollte, ist, dass Samaria immer basierend auf dem Kontext zu deuten ist, je nachdem, welches Buch man liest. Das kann entweder Gottes Volk darstellen oder die Nation. Okay. So, and we have to see the correlation between the two. We have to understand which one it's speaking about to, to rightly identify what's going on here. Right? Wir müssen dann jeweils den Zusammenhang betrachten, in dem Samaria erwähnt wird, damit wir verstehen können, über wen es spricht, damit wir auch das richtig hier dann platzieren können. And because of this point, I also want to make the argument about 1 Kings 22, because here you have the, a, a perfect illustration of when we don't rightly divide God's work. Und right? uh, den Punkt möchte ich auch hier mit 1. Könige 22 machen, denn hier haben wir eine wirklich gute Darstellung, was passiert, wenn wir Gottes Wort nicht richtig teilen. Right? Richtig. So these are things that we have to consider and we have to look at closely. Und das sind nämlich Dinge, die wir betrachten müssen und die müssen wir noch genau anschauen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Right, let's, uh, anyway, let's close it. Lieber Himmlischer Vater, Thank you very much for this, uh, new day of life. ich möchte dir sehr danken für diesen neuen Tag des Lebens. Und dass du versuchst, uns zum Nachdenken zu bringen, damit wir die Bibel verstehen können. Ich möchte einfach nur bitten, dass du uns zu den richtigen Schlussfolgerungen führen mögest. Und hilf uns, Vater, während des Tages dir zu gehorchen. Hilf uns, dass wir Freude an unseren Studien haben. Und bitte, Bless all the studies, bless the movement and this message. Und bitte fahre fort all unsere Studien und diese Bewegung und ja, die gesamte äh, Geschwister zu segnen. In Jesus' name. In Jesu Namen. Amen.